Hello everyone, in this video we are going to see how to copy data from multiple files into multiple SQL tables. If you are new to our channel, hit subscribe. Your subscription will motivate me to produce more video in better quality. Before we proceed, I just want to highlight a small limitation that you cannot do manual mapping because we are using the same copy activity to copy the data of different schema. And if you remember in our earlier video, we saw how we can add an additional column within the copy activity, which you cannot do it over here. Just have the same column name between your source file as well as your destination. And another limitation is that you cannot use the upset option, which is available in the copy activity. Let me show the destination tables. So these are the three tables where we are going to copy our data into it. And these are having different schema. Two of the table are having the same schema and the third table is having a different schema. I just want to show that we can able to copy the tables of different schema with the same copy activity itself. Just make sure that the source file is having the same schema as that of the destination table. And these are the various source file. I have created a mapping table which will list out for which table, what is the source file and in which directory it is. I have already showed the schema for these three tables alpha, beta and gamma forgot about the last one that we are going to ignore and similarly I have provided the file name in these columns. Let me show the files from my local itself. So these are the three files uh, which is going to be our source. I will be uploading this to data lake and these are the three tables and these are the three files and for these three these are the path in the data lake and I have created one more column which is active which will say whether I need to consider this row or not. Let's say for example if I am keeping active as 0 for row 2 then I shouldn't copy the data for beta table. So we should consider whatever the table which is having active status as 1. I have explained with this active flag because in several scenarios will be coming up like on a particular day we don't want to process data into this particular table maybe on some other day it may be required so instead of deleting from the table itself it is good to have a flag so that you can update the flag based upon your requirement now i will show how this path are maintained in the data lake so inside the data lake i have only one container which is for source and inside that i have created a daily folder under that we have separate folders like alpha beta and inbound Inside alpha we have files for alpha and similarly for beta as well. But for gamma what I did is I have created one more folder which is inbound. Under that only we have a separate folder for gamma. And inside that we have source file for gamma. You can ignore the fourth file which is inactive. Now let's jump to our Azure data factory. In our Azure data factory under manage. I have already created a linked service to my data lake as well as to the SQL server. If you don't have idea on linked service, watch my introduction video about ADF. Now we need to create a data set for this table. Since we are going to read it, we need to create this uh, data set for this table. So create a new data set and search for SQL. Mine is not Azure SQL. So I'm selecting this. This is my personal uh, server. So I'm just selecting it. Let me uh, provide a name to the data set and from the linked service drop down select the SQL link and it will load what are the tables available inside the SQL server. So under that I need a, a file mapping master and I want to import the schema of the file as well. Just click on OK. And now just if you go to schema you will be able to find the schema of the particular table over here now let's create a data set to the data lake as well so we need to create a data set for this container alone because the files are going to be dynamic files and folder are going to be dynamic we just need to have a data set for this container alone so in order to do it just go here and click on new data set and search for data lake click on continue and my input uh, file is in CSV format, so I'm selecting it. Let me provide a name to my data set. 
and from the drop down select the link for the data lake and just browse here to select the container so i'm selecting the container alone uh, and i'm not going to select any folders inside it because these folders we are going to read dynamically from here so i'm not going to select uh, the folder i'm just selecting the container alone and my first row is a header in all our source file meaning like that column name will be in the uh, header of the file so i'm just selecting it and i'm not going to import any schema so i'm selecting none from here and now we need to create a data set for our destination tables which is alpha beta and gamma instead of creating a separate data set to all these table we are going to have a single data set and we will parameterize the uh, table name so here search for sql and select it and click on continue let me provide a name to the data set and from the linked service drop down i am selecting the sql link i am not going to import any schema or i am not even going to select the table name because those are going to be dynamic completely and here we need to parameterize the table name in order to do it go to parameters and click on new here provide the parameter name as table name but while recording i gave us file name by mistake but please provide the parameter name as table name while you are doing it click on connections so for the table instead of selecting from the drop down we are going to pass it dynamically so what we need to do is just click on edit and here you will get two boxes the first one is for the schema and the second one is the table name schema is dbo which is the default uh, schema in sql so i am providing as dbo and this table name is going to be dynamic so click on add dynamic content and select the parameter which we have created just click on it and click on ok now let us see whatever we have done so far we have created a data set for our file mapping master table and we have imported the schema as well and for the source file we didn't import any schema and we didn't create any parameter we just selected the source container and for the destination we have created a parameter and we have passed it under the table name now let's publish now let's jump to creating a new pipeline from there only we are going to start implementing just click on new pipeline the first task is to read from the uh, file mapping master table right then only we will get to know what is the source and what is the destination right so in order to do it look for lookup task just drag and drop and here if you wish to change the name of the particular task you can do so from here i'm just renaming it after that just click on settings and select the source data set which is our file master data set right which we have created file mapping master data set so select it here uncheck this first row only because we want all the rows from the table so just uncheck it and do we need to read all the rows from the table no right we just want whatever having flag as one right so these are the data we need to read so in order to do it so i'm just typing the sql query for the same if we execute this we will get only these three rows which is having the column active as one now just click on query you can use store procedure as well but for time being i'm going with the query i'm going to paste the query which needs to be executed now we will try to run this task alone just run this debug in order to run it it got completed and here if you check the output just let me copy this to a notepad let me paste it and here if you see we have several information in our output like count value and all but all we need is whatever the item inside this value array this square bracket is there right which means array so we need the this item the first item represents alpha table second beta and the third one is gamma so we need the item which is in this value array 
so we are going to write a for each loop for it because we are going to loop each of the items inside that value array so let me drag and drop under settings just click on item and click on add dynamic content here we need to select the value which we are passing in the array so here you are able to see right this particular part so here it is showing value array right look up value array in the output it is particularly fetching that value array so just click on it now what will happen is each of the item inside this value array will be looped into it what we need to do is click on this edit icon to add an activity inside this for each. What we are going to do is inside this for each we are going to add a copy activity. Just drag and drop and under source select the data set which you have created for the source container. Just select it and if you have provided the file name as well we can leave this uh, file path in the data set option but we didn't specify any file name right. So we need to go with wildcard option in the data set we didn't provide any file name so I'm going with wildcard in wildcard if you see the container name is already here but the path we are yet to provided and path as I told you earlier we are getting from this table right what we need to do now is we are already reading the output from the lookup activity and we are iterating into this loop right so this value will be already available in the output let me add a dynamic content here and for each already is having that value but which column we want to uh, read that we need to specify so I have put dot let me open the output for each will be getting this highlighted value but all we need is this particular path column alone so just copy it and let me go to Azure Data Factory just paste that particular column name so what it will do what are the value coming to this particular path it will be applied over here which means the directory is going to be this one and in this text box we need to specify the file name we don't have complete file name all we have is file name prefix and this is the value let me show in the data lake let me go to alpha daily alpha so if you see only we have this prefix part we don't have this rest of the part because this will be changing every day right so for that only we have configured only the prefix part and we ignored this uh, uh, suffix part. So here what we need to do is click on the text box and then click on add dynamic content. And as we did earlier just select the current item of for each and here we need to provide this column name so that we can access the prefix file name copy it and dot followed by the column name so this value will be applied over here but we have only the prefix part right if I leave this as it is it won't able to read the file because our file is having suffix part as well right that date part we need to say to Azure Data Factory to pick up a file which is having this as prefix and some suffix part is going to be there in order to do it just cut this part we'll be pasting it later and go to function here look for concat so usually it will be under string function if you are not able to search it just go here under string function and the first item is going to be concat so paste it paste the item which we have cut and remove this art part so usually only one art, sh art should be there uh, for a nested expression always leave the first art to be there and uh, just remove un unwanted art in between what concat will do is it will append the strings which we provide in commas let me provide a comma and followed by star in single quotes what this expression will provide us in the first loop it will provide a value something like this crypto alpha star so what this star represents is the star refer refers the suffix part that suffix part can be a date part or it can be something else as well so for our scenario the suffix is date part so we will be passing this expression to the wildcard file name 
so obviously what it will do it will pick up whatever the file which is having the file name prefix followed by the date part or whatever it is but our, for our scenario the date part is going to be the suffix now let's come back to Azure data factory so this concat expression will for sure it will pick up this kind of files which is having this suffix part as well now let's come back here and click on ok we have given the path name followed by the file name as well as a wildcard and now it's time to move to sync under sync from the drop down select the destination uh, data set which is our sql data set just select it here if you see we have parameterized this file name part right in the uh, table data set so this came up here so i'm going to add this as a dynamic content and just click on this for each current item and now what we need is this particular table name value so copy it and paste it so whatever the value comes here it will be passed to this uh, parameter to the particular data set now and one more thing if you go to mapping please do not import any schema because for each of the file our schema is going to be different right the tables are different so don't import it just click on publish let me come out of the loop and let me debug in order to test out the flow it got completed and if you mouse over on copy activity it is showing total run 3 3 times it ran and down below also you are able to see this right 3 times the copy activity run for each of the uh, tables it ran once and if you click on the output here you are able to see how many rows got copied and that's it you can cross your refine table as well whatever the SQL scripts and the excel file which we have used for this video i have uploaded to this community just join here for free with your email id and under library you will be able to access this resource to practice under that i have uploaded this particular zip file which will have the sql scripts excel file as well as the arm template of this particular video and this is the video number just download it here as of now this is currently free I'll be providing the link to join this community in the video description. Please do join. Thank you for watching this video. Please hit subscribe and follow me on LinkedIn to stay connected.